My name is Viraj and I come from India. So today I'm going to show you like about the translation sprint. But before that, I want to know something from you. How many are from different communities? I mean, you are like I'm from India. You, I mean, okay. just want to know the. If you are from Indonesia. Indonesia then. Japan. Japan. And other country. Germany. 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 Then Nigeria. Nigeria. Oh. So like Italy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so so many uh, countries and we do translation, right? So how many of you actually do translation for LibreOffice? Okay. And and uh, what are I mean? How many members are you in, in your community? Who are actually doing translation with you? In Italy, it's a dozen people. How many? Twelve. Twelve. Around twelve. In other community? Uh, in Indonesia, hundred. Hundred? Those are yeah. active, totally. Yeah, because we already do the handle screen. Okay. And then we have more members. Okay. In Japan, maybe the so five was so less less than ten active members. Okay. So I think it has some problem. Before that, I'm going to start. I'm actually a professional linguist. I do work for uh, Microsoft, Google project, even uh, not only the paid project, I am a uh, local leader for uh, Mozilla, then LibreOffice, and other open source organization, VLC, Fedora, and all. So we all heard about native blank project, NLP, right? We all heard about it. but what is it? We know that it's a worldwide community where the volunteers are doing translation, doing QA, doing uh, their own language, solving their own language problem, right? Here yeah, we can see the there is website uh, regarding Japanese, then Turkish, but main thing is translation. Because if we don't have the translation, then we cannot show this into our website or maybe we cannot finish our product, the LibreOffice. Am I right or wrong? We need the translation. That is the main thing. So almost in every community, the big amount of incomplete translation left. You can check in portal if you see this. But there is some reason why it is. As taken as an example, you can see the inc incomplete translation status stats, which is already uh, read in mark. Because in some community, one people, some community, two people are translating, or sometimes if they are busy on their own work, then they didn't give their time, and uh, in the when the version will come, it will have the English string because we don't have the translation, right? In some community, they have uh, like more people, it's okay. But most of the community, we are facing this problem. But what's the solution? Solution is organized <coughs> translation team. Why? It's an easy proven method. What is regarding like, uh, Translation sprint. Translation sprint like the people who has knowledge of their own language, who has knowledge their own language, they can just come and put their own translation. I know that they don't have much experience on localization and other things. We don't need it, but we need the mass translation because we need the mass translation and we, the people who are actually translating previously, they have their own experience. So they can do the review things. 
if we do in this way then our work will be easy much more than easy and we don't have to wait for the like, like the main people who are local leader and those maybe like sometimes they are busy with, because this is a volunteer position so we cannot give them pressure so they are so if they will get some uh, ready made translation or pending translation they can just review those things and our work will be much easy so next thing is how we can do that there's two types of translation speed one is online one is offline the online sprint is very much easy because you don't have to think about the logistics and you don't have to find a venue you don't have to uh, arrange the food and all things what you have to do you have to set a date you need a online channel maybe IRC or something else any free uh, collaborative tool where people will join and where you just uh, give them the knowledge how to start localization or how to translate but they should have the basic understand of their language otherwise they cannot translate it because they are very new people and you can just mentor them like okay uh, if you have some problem you can ask us in online and we will give them the answer and in this way we also create the community because mass people are not very much technical or they cannot fix the bugs but in this way we can collect them we can ask them to uh, use our software try our software then uh, translate our software so this is online and offline offline is like something tricky sometimes it needs the uh, uh, budget and finding menu but it has some uh, good issues because you can give the personal training to people who are you think like those people can do much work in future so you can get some potential contributor where you can give them training and where you can personally mentor them and you can uh, not only give them the training on translation otherwise also QA, QA the translated product then you can also review and you can personally meet them so that is one way we could do in the offline training so here is the information like before the for the online event what we do and for the offline event what we do before event setting a date setting a chat room for discussion promotion the event in the community blog post and meet social media on the event day welcome the attendee describe the event flow describe necessary guidelines to translate the things and mentoring the new people and just hands on training because they don't know anything they are very new and after the event just follow up with them and write down the report of the <coughs> event so that other people can know about your event maybe they will follow the same strategy what you followed and for offline the same thing but there is some changes uh, you can also distribute the swag sticker or something they will be motivated and um, also you can give them the hands-on personal training and this way uh, you can build a relationship with the contributors so next thing is the creating the agenda we talk about the two types of event one is online and offline but what is the agenda what should we do and in that day first libre of the libre office l tenant and the process we should tell them what is libre office and what is libre office l tenant and the process i mean how the libre office shifted to the in next branch or uh, maybe like in the next version how it will work what's the timeline between the uh, two version so we will give them the whole uh, details next is LibreOffice localization style guide uh, I don't know like uh, we have it or not but uh, for the personal uh, I mean for the local community they might have suppose someone is coming for the Japanese translation they should have their own style guide their own system like how to translate like the number will be translated or not or uh, the which phrase will be translated which phrase will be 
transliterated they know it so they will just discuss their style guide because new people don't know what should be translated and what should not be translated so they can just discuss on the style guide and next is LibreOffice localization terminology which is very much important because we LibreOffice is a software it's a it's not it's not a uh, document it's not a document like we cannot translate the every word word by word it has some meaning it has technical meaning so we have to follow the terminology and as a industry person we use those things the style guide and terminology which is very much important otherwise people might uh, get some bad knowledge about the software if we don't put the right word in the right section if we just translate the word by word then it might give some wrong information next is understanding the TM TM means the term, uh, terminology management uh, sorry translation management translation memory it's like like before the new people some other people already translated so we have to check those translation and we have to understand the what are the translation they have used for the specific word and we can discuss them so that when the new people will come and translate they should use those words and it make the consistent translation so that's why understanding TM is very much important next hands on Poodle training because people don't know how to use Poodle so we should give them the training on Poodle and Poodle is the main instance for the uh, LibreOffice then completing and reviewing the pending translation on that day the local leader or maybe the person who are actually uh, well, in the old days they are translating they can just review those things because they don't need to again translate the translation is coming so they can review and they can also uh, completing uh, they can guide the new people they don't, don't need to do the again a new translation because translation is coming <coughs> we need the translation from the mass and then the people who are actually actively translating they should just uh, focus on completing the quality just checking the quality of the translation is coming and uh, and making them correct and uh, to send them the for the final version next the QA of localized version of LibreOffice sometimes we do the translation but we don't use the localized version because we do the translation and in, in some community we have seen that they are translating but they are not checking their product own so they should check their own translated product they should check with the screenshot method there is various method of uh, QA uh, for the translated of uh, for the translated version of the software so they just check uh, with the English uh, correspondent English screenshot so they can understand like what is wrong and what need to be fixed and all things next thing is uh, training on bug ZS or maybe like any uh, bug system which can be where like the wrong translated uh, content should be reported and people can fix them from their uh, bug reporting system and next is future community plans it's optional they can build a new people uh, new community from that event also and feedback from the attendees so this is the general agenda which if you can use it for your uh, event you will definitely get success because I have used this formula for almost uh, five or six local communities and we got the result so I request you all if you are doing translation is okay but you should actually organize this type of meetup at least in online and you just get educate yourself on these terms and you just uh, give them the knowledge so that you can create a uh, good community of translator or localizer and they might uh, give you a good <coughs> valuable product in the future so few moments of one successful event we have done where uh, these these are the people actually don't know anything they know the, their language very well they know english and their language 
So just I invite them and I told them and uh, I just give them the training according to our agenda. Like what should be done, what should not be done, how to translate and all things. And they have just followed uh, my, what are the things I told, they have just followed and they completed the events. And the stats we got from that, they trained new people. Because seven, we have like 10 people and it should not be like a big mass. It should be like 10, 12, 15, 5, but we need the quality people who are actually interested to translate. We don't need like the mass translation will be coming from the people who don't know their language also. We should not do these things. We should, we need the people who at least know their language very well because this software will be available for the local language. So the local people want that language, will uh, the software in the correct way. So that's why the event should be with the focused people. Next, participated 10 people, then 5 hours long event. The event can be 5 to 6 hours maximum, not more than that. And uh, there will be like 1 to uh, 1 and a half hour maximum, the, the training and discussion and all. And other than that, the translation uh, sprint will be going on, then uh, giving them some training and all things. So on that event, we have done 5k new words translated. I mean the new words, which is already in the pending and we have done the 5k new words and 2k words actually reviewed. So in this way, if some, some community has like 20,000 or uh, 40,000 new words, if they organize at least two, three events in, the, in one year, or maybe like one events in the offline and three events in the online, they will cover at least half by one year translation. So this is a this is totally proven method, and you can just copy paste it no problem because it will uh, definitely help you. And uh, this is about me. Like if you have any question regarding this, you can ask me. And uh, uh, I I. I'm an industry expert on localization, so you can ask me related to any uh, localization. So that's it from my side. Any question? Thank you very much. Uh, maybe you, you can give us an idea about this. Uh, usually we have more than one version of the office uh, left untranslated yes. or maybe incomplete. If we uh, completed the last the earlier version, maybe 6.0, then we, we will be late to uh, catch up in the newest version. So, we no. how, how, how can we... Uh, Always, actually this was the my question also some time back and I asked the LibreOffice members and they told always translate the master. Okay, so if you do the master things and always try to update those things, if you do the master things, you don't need to worry about the other things. So if we do the master thing, then the other is... Uh, Others is okay because uh, suppose you started now and before that like two version is already going on. So you started with the master and if you do the master, then those, the next version will be branched from that master. But if you translate in, in the uh, earlier version, it will not go to the master version. So then your translation will be in green. Got my point? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So that's why I always try to complete the master version. If it's not, I know that it's a huge uh, translation tax if you are not, if you don't have so much members and uh, if you are don't, not giving like uh, the regular contribution, then it will be huge tax. But always try to complete the master so that whatever you are doing, it will be also available for the next version. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other question? Okay. How much time we have? Yeah, you still have a lot of time in almost uh, 10 minutes. Okay. <laughs> yes. So you mentioned the translation memory? Yes. Yeah, so do you use any specific software for See, um, for translation memory for the paid work, work for, for the paid work like for the Google and Microsoft, they are using their own translation memory. 
they have their own server so whatever translation are give like putting their translator those all will be available for your so when you do the translation those will come in the right side you can get the idea but for the uh, for for libreoffice we have the same thing it is available if if something like if some part of that string is already translated it will be available inside in maybe in the below side so you can get some idea like what they are actually trying to say so for 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 other like uh, uh, for professional way if you want to use that there's the trados software sdl sdl trados which is uh, very uh, highly expensive software which is actually used for the uh, uh, maintaining the professional like softwares which is invested much uh, even you can get uh, the translation memory in everywhere if you are putting your own translation and uh, I think in portal you can download the translation memory also maybe what are the tra translation is already given you can get the whole details from that how about uh, Omega? Yes, Omega is also uh, <coughs> paid software. It's okay. Omega, Omega is also there. Uh, then um, XTM is there. There's uh, then so many softwares are, but they're all like paid. For LibreOffice, we are we don't have the paid thing, so we have the portal. And in portal, mm -hmm. you can also download the memory. Also, one thing. In LibreOffice, maybe if you have the administrative access, suppose you have done some localization for the other product. Suppose LibreOffice is a software, right? It's a software, it's an office software. Suppose you have uh, done translation for any other office software. So you can also import them if you want. But it should have the license before importing them because, and that will like easy your job because you know, uh, whenever we are doing the work, why the translation memory is important? Because sometime back, if one word is like file, it's translated in my language, it's called file. It's just translated. But if some new people come and translate the file word in different way, then it might be problem for the new user. Because somewhere you will see the file and somewhere it's something different. So they can, un they can not understand like what is that word so that's why translation memory is very much important and we should follow this otherwise your translation will be there but uh, people cannot satisfy I have a question uh, the, about, I, I, I'd like to ask about the idea for the wiki translation so the, uh, to translate a wiki we cannot use the this translation memory yes. for the in the vault. Yes. And uh, uh, it is better to the uh, continuous writing with the application and the wiki and still yes. writing than uh, the It's like the whatever you are doing, it's like the new things. Right. I mean, you are just writing. Okay. So, because wiki is like all our document. So, all documents are like relatively unique from one another. So, it's okay. But the, for the software, you have like same string. Suppose uh, open a file. So this string will be available in almost every software. So, so that's why translation memory is very important. Yeah. And you know that one thing, if you do the professional translation or something, you can get the idea. Or at least before translating anything, you should have any, you should have used at least translated product. So you can get the idea of the what they have done. And this way you can also do the better translation. People are doing translation, but sometimes we have seen uh, that is not industry level. And sometimes uh, because we know that because we know that this uh, is not like we are paying them. We know that we are not paying them, but still we we want to teach them like how to translate very well. And that's why I am actually interested to create one uh, doc where everything will be mentioned so that the other community can also follow that and create their own uh, 
translation speed in detail. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. And uh, uh, we have a priority for the application translation yes. and then the translation. Yes. yes. Right. Thank you very much. That makes sense. We have five minutes or maybe three minutes. <laughs> and then, and then yeah. Uh, uh, how about do you use the uh, massive translation? Isn't that the neural network algorithm is happened and the uh, translation current is very high using the neural network? Yeah. And uh, some research labs are open uh, their engine for the yes. open source community. Yes. For so the for the machine translation. Uh, we can use it for our suggestion. Mm -hmm. Suppose you want the suggestion, and for the new people it will be very much help. But we should not directly commit there or save that translation directly. So it, it might be problem because Google Translate is giving sometimes very wrong translation and uh. like no meaning. So <laughs> machine translate will help you to get some suggestion, but we do not. And, uh, I'd like to introduce the uh, uh, translation translation text uh, by the uh, project, project uh, the service project produced by the uh, Japan government. Okay. It's uh, open for open source projects. Okay. And uh, their engine is can use for the open source translation. Okay. And then explicitly permit the use Public. of it. And they use the neural networks and the very high quality than Google Translate. <laughs> Please check it. Yeah, that is that, that is good, and Thanks we can also follow that. It's T E X T R A. It's, it's a, a service from the Japan government laboratory. They need N N I C T, National Computer Industry Information. If you want, you can have a one times of the seven enlightening talks. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we can prepare you. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much.